Definitely. How you feeling this evening? We good? We good? Yes. How are you? Man, crazy world. But hey, man, I've got this birthday party coming up and um, and the pandemic thing is going on. So I'm like, OK, wow. You know, kind of caught in between what I want to do. But, um, mm. you know, that's that's I'm just kind of, you know, I was talking to a couple of people about that. But, you know. Uh huh. That's what's going on on my end over here. So what do you mean you got caught up in between? What do you think you might not go because of the situation? We're gonna call it the situation um, or what you saying? Well, I well I I just didn't know, you know, because um, the the I don't want to be like one of the reasons someone came to my event and and caught this because I was at an event. It was a um, it was a mansion party in the hills, and one of the people there caught it. Oh. So I was like, "Wow, you know." Mm. So it, I just kind of was in between, you know. Oh, and, that's because and, yeah. If you yeah, invite so, somebody there too, and then it's the possibility. Yeah. Mm. So what I'm gonna do? Um, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bring masks for everybody, and <laughs> I'm gonna um, you know, when I perform, I'm gonna um. You know, wipe the, you know, disinfect the mic and all that. So I'm going to do what I can do, mm -hmm. you know, but I know people are looking forward to the birthday performance because it's, you know, we didn't have it last year and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, so I got the cheesecakes coming. My boy DJ oh, Big Mac is bringing cheesecakes. And, you know, word, DJ. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's all good. So I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm I didn't want to promote it too tough, mm -hmm. but tomorrow I'm going all out. I'm going to promote it all day. So that everybody know that it's going down this Saturday, and that's what it is. So, yeah. Happy birthday! Happy Earth Angel <laughs> birthday. on Saturday. This no, year? actually, the birthday. My birthday is um, Martin Luther King's weekend. So it's the day after everybody's off on that Monday. My yes. actual birthday is Tuesday. Okay, I absolutely. So it's on the 18th, and we're celebrating Martin Luther King's birthday on the 17th. I believe that Monday. So, yes, yeah. absolutely. So five day weekend, so you say for me. I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love you know. it. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's so cool. Absolutely, you get a lot of joy out of that. You have a rap for your birthday, or do you rap um for birthdays? Um, uh, you know, I'm a writer, so I just have the stuff that I've been working on, and uh, you know, through the the financial ups and downs, and, you know, mm -hmm. I had you know some of the projects that got put on hold. But now I'm ready to, you know, um, I think I'm ready to record like maybe three songs mm -hmm. and push them out. So I want to put the album out, you know. This so, year? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of okay. people have been waiting for the album. They've been anticipating the album. You know, and I've been putting out singles and stuff like that just to be consistent. I don't know, hey, I'm still here doing this thing. But um, mm -hmm. the album, you know, or the EP rather. EP. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I put the EP out and um, just go from there. But I just, you know, the, the, the music industry is such a crazy industry. I just didn't want to um, rush into things and give away, you know, my royalties and and everything, publishing and all that other stuff because mm -hmm. I am a writer, so that's serious to me, you know. So, yes, absolutely. But yeah, that's, that's what's going on. So, so that reminds me. Remember, uh, I showed it on a live at five show. Oh, I think it was on Monday or Tuesday, how Chuck D has worked with SAG after to give artists their money. So we're in the union as rappers. Well, we were, you know, so there's the wow. finalization of that working, um, taking place. So, wow. yeah, that's what that looks like. Yeah, absolutely. Go to work. I, I need to share that again, that uh, clip yeah. as well. So go to work. So is this something else that you want to share while I pull up that clip? You want well, to talk yeah. about in specific specificity? Well, you know, just everybody, you know, everybody, the world is, the world is doing what it's doing. So what you have to do is just do what's safest for you. So that, you know, I, I recommend that. And people need to start loving on the people that they know, you know, call them, tell them you love them, tell me thinking about them, because I've been seeing just a lot of people go home, you know, it gets closer and closer. You know, some people from the COVID, some people, from, you know, natural causes, you know, some people, um, you know, uh, you know, tragic situations. You know, I lost a friend. I was at the Frank Nitty. Remember, we was at Frank Nitty's uh, um, celebration for the, the life of badass. Yes. And, and two people now, two people that were there 
have been tragically, uh, their lives have been tragically taken. Mm. And I was like, wow. And I saw, I, you know, I, I, I saw one of the, one of the, um, uh, I think Slim 400, that's his name. And, um, and I was like, wow. And then the other brother, his name's RT. I just found out mm -hmm. RT. So I'm like, wow. So, so what this, would this, you, what are you, what would you say to help to, um, uplift the spirits or shall we say, um, you know what? I, you know what? Honestly, uh, it, it's it's pretty. It's 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 sad. It's it, it's sad. It, everything's already been said, so I can sit here and right. say so the same I'm, thing I'm that's been said. Looking forward to you giving us something that we want to uh, share. That's optimistic. Something on the, just, on the nature of what is it that your next project that you're use, utilizing your gifts so that way you can help to um, make a change or make things better. You know what? That's what that's what the show is about. Pretty much at Accelerator Radio, it's a platform where we could talk about a lot of different things, and this is probably one of the things we need to talk about. You know, a lot of times I go, you know, um, on I talk about subjects people tend to stray away from, you know, and 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 a lot of times that's be the situation, you know, um, you know, we a lot as as black men myself. You know, we really kind of, we really kind of did a number on the generations behind us. You know, to the point where uh, they really don't know what love is. You know, so they don't. I don't know. It's a, it's I'm a tough situation. On that, absolutely. So it's a tough situation. See about this guest or something. so that's why I always speak positive on things. You know, that's what I'm saying. I just I try to lead by example. You know. At the same time, you walk through the valley of the shadow by death. So anyway, uh, that's 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 just you know you know some things that I was just you know pondering on and thinking about. But um, yes, but you know I also got you know the um, the Super Bowl. We have the Super Bowl coming up, and it's in the city of Inglewood. And I'm glad that they didn't change it, you know, because they were thinking about changing the Super Bowl to a different location, relocating it. And I was like, wow. So I've been podcasting right there in front of um, uh, NFL headquarters, and you know, just it's it's just been an awesome experience. So I can't wait until Super Bowl weekend. But this is just the playoffs, so you know. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, I can't hear you. I asked you if you could continue speaking because I need you to continue because I have a, a phone call from oh, potential uh, that's what I didn't know. Oh. situation. Absolutely. And then I want to pull up the uh, I want to pull up the Chuck D. Oh, okay. It's all good. Situation. Well, so if you can continue, that's why I had you on a just solo. Just give me the layout. thumbs up. Okay. Oh, yes. that's cool. All right. Go to work. One, uh, multitask and go to work. Okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, for the for the people out there who um, are just, you know, getting to know your boy, Double G, you know, I have a radio show, also a podcast show. It is called The Show. And it airs every Monday from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. on the Accelerated Radio Network. And, uh, you know, I've been doing that for about maybe three, four years, you know, and uh, I have to give shout outs to my media mentor, Michelle Farrell, for just schooling me in the art of, um, you know, broadcasting, because it is an art, you know, I, you know, everything that you put your heart and soul to, in my opinion, is an art. So cooking is an art, you know, music is an art, you know, painting, poetry, you know, those are different, you know, form, forms of artistry. But, um, and, and, and I've been a music artist, officially a music artist, because there's different levels. And I've been a music artist for, I'm going to say about seven years, actually serious about being an artist for seven years. Uh, see, because you go, you start out as a rapper, 
you know, and then you go from a rapper to a music artist because of the different forms of artistry that you add to your, you know, to your music, you know, and to your craft. And, and so, you know, um, as I became a music artist, I was like, wow, this is something that I love to do. It's like a therapy to me. So a lot of my music is about the things I've been through, the things I've lived, you know, um, I'm kind of blatantly open about, you know, um, my lifestyle, my, my, my former lifestyle. Um, and that's what makes my music so interesting. <laughs> so that's why right, that part right there. Everybody want to know what your former lifestyle was, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so my former lifestyle, you know, just keeping 100%. Um, I grew up in the eighties. So I'm, uh, well, born in the 69, but grew up in the eighties when the, you know, the, the, the cocaine hit the era. So I'm like a former, former drug dealer. So, um, I used to be ashamed of that until I started to realize the things that I've learned being in, in that world, you kind of get to know people, um, would you say faster or would you you know that how you just you get to know people when you know uh, without their mask you know um you see different you see that you see that drugs have no um they don't care you know you you, you see doctors lawyers you see teachers you see um, you know, executives, CEOs, you, you know, all I've, I've seen it all. And it's like, wow, that's why I don't, ju I don't look at people for what they have. You know, I look past that because, okay, what are you doing when the camera's not on you type of thing? Because I've seen that type of lifestyle. So it, I tend to write about it. You know, I, I'm writing a book right now. Of course, you're going to help me put it out there, but, um, Finally, I've, 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 and I had to get permission from the people that I was in the, uh, that I was in the, um, in the streets with. I had to get like permission to, you know, put them out there because, you know, it's, 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 you know, I, of course I changed the names, but you, I want to tell it like you know, it is. Oh, yeah, of course that, mm -hmm. of course that, you know, and some of the people, a lot of the people are deceased and a lot of people are in jail. So, but it's a really, it's a really interesting read and I want to tell it. So that's just where I'm at. It just took me this, this, it just took me to get to this point, mm -hmm. you know, first doing the music, then like acting, you know, thanks to, you know, um, beautiful people like yourself, Levi Otis, Professional Hood Entertainment, you know, mm -hmm. Rich Grind Management, Rick Hard. I've gotten into mm -hmm. acting. So mm -hmm. now that I've gotten into acting, as, and I'm a writer, you know, in the form of music, I feel I can tell my, I can narrate the story. Mm -hmm. I want to narrate the story as it's going on. I'm going to write it, mm -hmm. but I, I see a book, I see a series, I see uh, volumes. I, I see a lot of things coming from this book. So I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just really excited about it. Absolutely. That's what I'm talking about. So with that in mind, I just put on the ticker kdp.amazon.com is where everyone can upload a book for free. Mm -hmm. So and it actually has a template and it'll make it pretty easy for you to learn how to create a book. Wow. So with that in mind, you're now a journalist. So journalist, mm -hmm. journalist Anthony Rush. Absolutely. That's right. That part. And but technically, you've already been a, a journalist. But it just didn't dawn on you what you've been doing as a radio host and yeah. promoting content people. Content creator. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, you've, you've taught me all this stuff. That's why, you know, I always keep your name. You know, they say, keep my name out your mouth. I'll keep your name in my mouth because you taught me a lot. You showed me a lot. So, that, you know, these I never knew that the things that I were doing, they had titles to them, you know. Mm -hmm like content creator, like, wow, mm -hmm. you know, journalist now. Wow. Man. You go to work. Yeah, I was just checking man. your name here on the bottom of the screen. I was looking to see what you put there is double G. 
Was that just automatic from you attending other Zooms or stream yards? And so uh, you forth? know what? Yeah, I probably will change that to the journalist so that I could, um, when I log in, I can log in as the artist or I can mm -hmm. log in as the journalist. And so. Absolutely. And you can always do that by renaming yourself by clicking in the three dots. You know, I'm forever teaching, whether live or behind the scenes. So That's you right. can rename yourself presently. I remember okay. I did that on Bobby Buck. Shout out to Bobby Buck <laughs> out the box economics. I started thinking about it. I was like, well, people keep talking about, you know, you need to charge for this, charge for that. So now I just put dollar sign, go to work. <laughs> so it's automatic. Right. There's no excuse. Right. You don't have to catch it on the back end. You could do it right now. Talk is cheap. It okay. can be cheap. So how do I? Uh, oh, there it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Edit the name. Yes. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay, see. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now, with that in mind, yeah, this is pretty neat. It's a working show, city, city, and you notice that I didn't put city to city. I was explaining that on another, the live at five show. I was in uh, on an errand and everything. I needed another printer, but on the go, I was still live, <laughs> live at five, and just to let people know that. It's a working show, just like with education. We have to implement education every day because right now we on a, a fast track yeah, so, of yeah, helping yeah. as many people become educated in the things that they want to be, be educated in. And sometimes by happenstance, like they say, uh, incidental learning, that's pretty much what is what most people appreciate because it, you know, when you talk to them face to face or talk to them at the juggler, they don't want to hear it. But if you're yeah. just saying it nonchalantly or you speaking to someone else, they rather hear the information that way. That's why, you That's know, right. on another show, I'm going to start doing some puppet shows. So you talk through the puppets, they do, they receive it differently. Or just like now, some you're right. information differently because they're not here on the stream. If they're, yeah. you know, as they observe, they pick up on things, you know. You know what? And I would like to be a part of that because, you know, thanks to Lance Gardner, you know, I became mm -hmm. a part of a, the puppet, the uh, the South Central uh, puppet family. Yeah. And totally. and we're communicating with kids through the puppets. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, that that that's a golden nugget you just dropped on us right there. You can't communicate, you know, mm -hmm. because people people tend to attach their personal feelings to an actual person. But mm -hmm. a puppet, they can receive what the puppet's saying out of fun, and that mm -hmm. just makes it that, that that much more easy for them to receive that message. It's just my opinion. And like what you were talking about earlier, like the mask, it takes that mask off, although the puppet is something, you know, interesting. <laughs> but at like the that. same time, <laughs> I, I'm creating a, a, a puppet. Now, I need people to know, yeah, before he was doing a puppet, I've been doing puppets, right? And then I know you've been doing a million things. So if you say it, I believe it. Trust that. Yeah. And trust, yeah, absolutely. It's documented. So, but go to work. So I'm and working on a new one, a new oh. puppet. Okay. What's <laughs> the name? Cold piece. What's the and name of it? I'm working on this name right now. Oh, okay. okay it's gonna be okay. a cold piece right there, but um I heard just it. thinking about it. Absolutely. So a whole show, you know, like you say, you build in a book, uh documentary a movie or sitcom yeah. video based on your story this content yeah. that you're talking about so the you know, same thing I, creating something here i also wanted to do like a, like a, like a, a cartoon mm -hmm. of of you know like the you know i'm gonna do the book the story and mm -hmm. all that other stuff but like cartoon like the boondocks version you know how the mm -hmm. boondocks is raw and they show but mm -hmm. When, that's that's where I'm actually. I, I don't want to do the. I, I said I want to do the movie. I would rather do the cartoon version mm. of the people. That way, it's easier to change the characters. You don't mm. have to worry about a whole host of actors. Absolutely. Different, different this. You can just you know you and somebody like me and you or me and someone else can sit down and you know and and, and put that together. See because mm. it's my lifestyle that I believe would make this thing a bestseller because I have lived an interesting lifestyle. <laughs> you know what okay. I mean? And for me to be where I am now, it, mm -hmm. it, it, I feel it has to be told. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel it has to be told. My battery is getting low. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. Say that again. 
my battery on my cell phone is getting low. <laughs> oh my okay. God. All right. Well, do you so want my to... scenery may change. So mm -hmm. I um uh yeah, do you have a take... virtual background? Meaning uh, for your other computer. Well, while you change the background, that's okay. Um, what do you call it? I will put the Chuck D video on there right now, go. and then you can make that happen, okay? Okay. Like I said, this is a working show, and we need to promote exactly Ooh, what yeah. Chuck D is doing just as well, okay? This is hey, uh, absolutely. I'll make that happen right now. Go to work, go to work. So I'm going to share my screen and take us to the video here with the one and only Chuck, Chuck D and... We're gonna go here. All right, there you go. The music industry is a place where capitalism, racism, and anarchism are all combining to make the field very unfair for labor, people working, and the artists creating. Indeed, it's something that artists across genres have protested for a long time. If they're gonna be indeed a delivery service, then that's fine. But even FedEx doesn't say that they own the thing that they ship. It ultimately keeps us apart and uh, it keeps the people in power uh, in charge of us. We need to have contracts that make sense. I haven't made anything off of samples. Do you ever get a dime of that? For the most part, myself, no. Lots of people do. Uh, but you have to figure a way because you don't have enough money to fight the big companies. What do we really need record companies for? Now, a major U.S. union is teaming up with top artists to address some of these issues. The Screen Actors Guild working with legends like Curtis Blow and Public Enemy founder Chuck D, the Grammy-winning Rock and Roll Hall of Famer. Now, their new group is advocating several reforms, including fair artist compensation, benefits, and a federal law that would get artists better paid for their work. Chuck D's been fighting the power his whole career, from his art to his advocacy, including years as a political analyst and advocate with the show Unfiltered that aired on Air America with, back in the day, Rachel Maddow, before MSNBC. My special guest back on the beat is Chuck D. Thanks for being here, sir. Thank you, Ari, for taking the time. And here we are, right? Here we are. You have been walking the walk, talking the talk, making the art. Uh, I've met you before, you know, I grew up on, on your work. And so looking at something here that you're trying to do in the real world that also relates to the art is interesting. Uh, tell us about the Hip Hop Alliance, what you're advocating for. Great power comes responsibility. And this is an industry that everybody seems to think and also speak about as being all over the world and, and probably the most infectious, you know, uh, genre that's out there right now for the last couple of the last three or four generations. And this is about understanding that in show business, as James Brown used to say, there's a show, there's a business, there's the industry. So looking forward to 2022. Um, you know, engaging the hip hop and R B community to organize and promote wages and fair royalties and strong health and retirement benefit of artists. Yeah, I'm reading from the script, you know, because it's important that people hear the details and these facts will be a part of this alliance. First union is really my responsibility to be able to push it forward. If you are successful, if for example, this law passes, I'm gonna just put this up. We talk about laws all the time in the news. This is a proposal, the Federal American Music Fairness Act. Uh, it would give artists more ability to get the royalties from radio play. It would try to standardize pay structures with streaming. Um, it's bipartisan, interestingly, in the House. Uh, what would be achieved if it passed? And how does streaming fit into that? Well, you got to have somebody on it. And, and all these changes and laws are being made every week and every month. And what hip hop hasn't had up to this point is a monitor that looks out for every move and every change that's been taking place. So this is what this organization and alliance slash union does. And there's a lot of people uh, past, present, and also future that, you know, really don't have the clue. So where did they get the clue from? The only way to get the clue is to be organized. Get it from an organization. So it's time to put the, you know, the bigger don't pants on, well, whatever, and making sure that, that these changes are made and we monitor what goes on to be a uh, participant and what happens. What do you, do you think it means? 
Look, I'm going to also have to say that the educated and power artists about their agreements with labels, producers, and also agents and managers, and also empowering artists to protect their livelihoods and futures through legislation and policy changes at the federal and state level, especially in the United States of America, where this stuff goes on every day in D.C. or in the state. Then it actually has tentacles that reaches out further because there's got to be accountability, at least in this nation, to know all this activity that's happening around the world all the time. you got to have somebody at the switchboard. What does it mean for the art and its impact to fix some of these things so artists, and, and specifically often black artists, uh, have more support and ownership of the work they've created, which as we just showed in the intro, um, is often the exception, not the rule. Every situation needs some kind of guidelines, mentorship, coaching. Um, yeah, you can go get a lawyer, you can get a business manager, but what makes them accountable? What makes them uh, understand that there's a that there's a, a rule book to go by. And how do you keep up with that? You got people out there that they, they follow up with the sports pages. They know who's getting what. They know what agents are, what managers do. You know what are the building codes in the arena? And music and hip hop people that say that they love it are usually clueless. You've got to give them a clue about informing them about what they love, and then you can go on on the breadcrumbs from that point on forward. Once they understand what it is, then they understand why they love it instead of just loving it because it turns them on. So I just think this is a, yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the ugly work. But this music, just like jazz and blues, is no longer adolescent. And when it was an adolescent music, it probably was in the 1980s, which is like, what, 40 years ago. So look, it's yeah. about time. Somebody got to be growing in the room already. You know, I mean, everything has something behind it that helps make it go on and on to the break of dawn in the hip hop street since uh, uh the godfather curtis blow you know told me that chuck you need to be in the seat to bring attention and fruition of what we've been doing and there's a lot of people involved in it you, you mentioned mm -hmm. the adolescence i mean when we when we think back to how some americans first learned about you uh through do the right thing through the art when radio raheem was walking around with the cassette tapes in the boom box, then we go to CDs, right? Vinyl has come back in a little bit of a of a nostalgia, but most of it's out on streaming now. And I'm curious what you think about the fact that the technology does amazing things. I mean, you and I are of a generation where we remember buying one album, playing it till you couldn't play it anymore, trading. And now anyone uh, with a phone can get access to literally hundreds of millions of of tracks and yet we see the streaming numbers aren't working much better for most of the most of the artists that super top are getting paid well and we could get into that but what do you think about that and i'm curious as an artist who still has so many listeners how does the streaming affect you do you feel like uh on the flip side public enemy's work is out there and accessible in a way that it might not have been globally before Well, it, you know, technology goes hand in hand, cheat the job with, with the music. I mean, if it wasn't for the technology, you don't hear the music. Mm -hmm. Thomas Edison says Mary had a little lamb on his, um, in his uh, device that he makes, his recording device in 1870. So if you don't have, I mean, you always had the music, but the music and the technology has always gone hand in hand to make quote unquote an industry. So if this newest adjustment is streaming, as opposed to when I was coming up, it was, you know, vinyl and 45s and then later on cassettes and then later on cds and then later on downloads you gotta have somebody that keeps school in sports you have sports casters and broadcasters right mm -hmm. you don't have that in music like you even had when you had radio jocks and form so this is sort of like saying maybe this puts some of the information in the in the people in place that can inform not just the masses but especially those that participate in it and what it is so yeah the streaming is just different you know just came but what is it and how does it work for you and how can you work it uh, when the game changes you gotta you know dance to the new tune and make mm. sure you know what that record is so yeah and, and this is what the hip-hop alliance is probably best suited to be there right. as a structure but you just can't go and get over on the artists and the music no more. That means the big power boys or whatever, 
they can't get over just because yeah. they happen to find something. Mm -hmm. or artists just won't be able to just always just say what they want without being accountable to something. You know, if you come right. out of the neighborhood, you can't be anti the neighborhood coming up out of the neighborhood and looking for love for the neighborhood. So there's something that says, hold it, hold it, hold it. This is what this is. This is what they're saying. You could, you know, and I know art is subjective, but then it has to have, be able to have its categories to be listed and recognized from, for it to do its particular thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's true. New technology, you know, it's how you actually ebb and flow with that. Yeah, well, you know, some people know that you are, among other things, old school, Chuck. I don't know that anyone knew you would take it all the way back to Mary Had a Little Lamb, mm -hmm. which is a deep cut. You know what I'm saying? That's the first recording. That's a deep, deep, deep cut. 1877, I think. Thomas Edison, right there in the state of Jersey, I think. If not Jersey, yeah. probably. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, people forget that Thomas Edison, you know, he had some bars. He, You know, they were derivative. Uh, yeah, Thomas before, got and he got frustrated because the, the recording industry got crowded. He says, ah, this that's right. Mm. That's right. Um, before I lose you, I want to do a little bit of the politics where you have a voice. We dug something up. I don't even know if you will remember this, um, but a public service announcement, Chuck D, telling people to vote uh, and that voting helps get the suckers out of office. Take a look. You know, check this out. This is Chuck Deal, the public enemy, telling you about something that's serious right about now. Look, as we go into the terror dome in the 1990s, it might be important for folk to get some suckers on out of office. You know what I'm saying? So understand, if you're 18 or over, understand that you have a right to vote. Mm. You have a right to vote. Uh, talk to us about what you see in this generation, because I know you pay attention, uh, and I, I think that people might, some people might not realize how long your work has been before it was a trend or whatever really telling people get involved get educated it wasn't about one party or the other you criticized both parties but you definitely said you want to fix these problems of poverty or structural racism you have to get involved and i, I just want to say you don't need to hear it from me but I, i'm going to say it because it's my program um there are people who think that's not super cool in our industry or they only do it later you know after their time you were doing it uh, when it mattered in so many ways, I think that means something to people. What do you see in this next generation right now that's active in certain ways, that's online, that's talking about police brutality, uh, but also, you know, may not be as politically directly active in the music, or at least some of today's hip hop, as before? Uh, all your thoughts on that, sir? Number one, artistically, I don't care what they say is think. I care less. Number two, you should always know where you live. You've been 116 countries already. Under 16 countries don't understand this. Know where you're going and know what you're stepping into, especially when you step into somebody's house or home or whatever. Um, when I go to different countries, you gotta know the law. The law wherever you go. If you live in a country, know the law. In the United States of America, you know the law, you gotta kinda use the law to attack the law if you don't like the law. And that voting is part of that. Voting is essential, it's like maybe washing your tail in the morning. Now, you don't have to wash, but then if you don't wash, don't go around saying that something stink. Now, that's what hip hop is able to do, to be able to get a message from without it being all convoluted. Break it down to the bare essence. And when it comes down to this country where all the hypocrisies are going on, it's impossible to go on just your emotion without keeping score. Um, sometimes I might watch on news channels and watch online and be able to come up with a consensus, but you cannot freestyle the reality of what's surrounding you at all times. You cannot get, you know, afford yourself to get lost in the metaverse right now. And mm -hmm. with the metaverse being an alternative to drift away, you know, you have to have something in somebody in your cipher that is able to be routed, to be rooted in reality. And um, this is what the music before provided, but now it's a little bit more than that. You gotta have real people doing real things because in real life, you might be online all day, but human beings are furnaces. They gonna have to eat. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna have to live in a spot that 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 ain't under 32 degrees and maybe not over 110 degrees. And right now they're talking metaverse or the other alternative is saying that you drift away from the planet Earth and that's called death. So we don't want those actually without it happening before our time. All facts. I mean, especially when you get into that the digital side, which is part of the technological change that we've 
been talking about courses in this interview. But all our culture runs through that now. So all our co- culture is running into screens. You got to have somebody to decipher and be literate to the screens coming at you for everything. They come to get you, they come to get your money. So it's a dance. It all just turn the phone off, put the screen down. But in today's societies, that's not proven to be realistic. So you got to pick out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's to me knowledge. You know, educating yourself, loading yourself up, from understanding what it is. That's fighting the power. The power right now is something that's going to get you that you don't recognize and see coming. So that's mm-hmm. what it is. On fighting the power uh, on the beat tonight, you get the last word. Chuck D, thank you as always, sir. Yeah, man. Hip Hop Alliance is is definitely looking to tie things up and organize and be strong for the culture that so many people love, not just here in the United States, but worldwide. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Chuck. All Thank right. You. That part right there, you got to love it. So what do you think about that? I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. Go to work, go to work. So what do you think about that? Well, you know, coming from Chuck D, you know, that carries a lot of weight. So, you know, basically telling everybody to get in where you fit in and let's make it happen. You know, um, yeah, it's time to, 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 you know, to actually to give to give the music back to the artists. You know, so, I mean, he said a lot of he, he said a lot of things that I'm like, wow, stuff needs to be said, you know, and I'm glad that it takes a legend. Well, it took a legend to, to bring it to the forefront. But um. You know, I, I'm feeling that 100 percent, you know, especially coming from brother that's been with the movement since I was a young man. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Right now, you know, I'm a mature man right now. But when I was a young man, Chuck D was talking the same thing. So um, a lot of people change with the times. But Chuck D is not one of those individuals. He has not changed as far as his thoughts on, you know, the music industry. Mm-hmm. Yes, like he said, somebody has always be grounded in reality. Yeah, exactly, and that's definitely always been him. That's that's been Chuck, and you know what? And, and I kind of that's I, I kind of like that I come from the old school hip hop thing because I kind of know that without it being told to me, you know, because when certain people from your from your era get a hold of your music. It's a tribute or a disrespect to them. And I always want to be a tribute to the artists who came before me. You know, I grew up listening to Chuck D, you know, X Clan and and you know, you know, those those brothers with the message, you know, NWA always, you know, you know, people people like to look at NWA from a certain perspective. But if you if you look at the big picture, NWA was enlightening people on a lot of things the way they knew how to open people's eyes. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they did it then. It's time for us to do it now. Wow. Right. That's Absolutely. That's Imagine the momentum if it would have continued. And that's, see, that's always the mission of the people who's trying to keep our voices from being heard. That's always been the mission is to keep it from, you know, from uniting you know, because people forget, we had a million man march in Washington. We didn't have to storm. No, we didn't storm no capitals. We didn't do none of that stuff. We had a million people on the same page. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, you can't say that a million people can't get on the same page on what Chuck D is talking about. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's part of our teamwork as media influencers is to continue to to spread the word, whether it's a clip here, a clip there, Instagram photo, or mentioning what he's doing, what he's working on. Absolutely. Because it takes the masses. If it was a million of us podcasters doing the same thing and just saturating the media, imagine. Yep. There's power in numbers. Mm-hmm. And you know we've, we've learned that time and time again. The only time they ever take it serious is when they see the numbers. 
So, you know, instead of gathering in groups on the on the pavement, we can gather in groups on cyberspace. You know, um, mm -hmm. I wonder how many people can we have a Zoom meeting with? You know, we need to start thinking about that, bringing everybody in, you know, see if we can have, uh, you know, the, the, you know, as many people as possible. But it's a, mm -hmm. it's a message that I feel we need to assist. Absolutely. 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 So just like we talk about a unity, you see hip hop alliance is a synonym. And just think about, you just talk about the numbers, the data, the tracking, if the data, the, I mean, come on now, um, just to see like Prince say what he said, the, you know, it's like, really? Oh my goodness. Why did we go in a, a certain direction? Was it based on hearsay? And you know, people, cause you know, that could double back to like we were just saying, if more people shared Chuck D's video, but just the same way many people did share, you know, well, you need to get with this record company. You need to get with this record company back in the day. But what, where was the track, track, you know, the tracking, the data and so forth. So why isn't there enough money? And I know some people out there are, are gurus in figuring out the digital, um, how you digitize your royalties. And some people have been able to go back and, you know, per se, sue people and get money, you know, from back in the day. Yeah. Um, so it's just a matter of how, what do we, where do we go from now? Because like we talked about that on another show about spoiled milk. Okay. Where do we go now? Presently we're in NFTs. It's about non-fungible tokens. It's yeah. about a new wave, just like people were having issues with the ATM card back in the day, but now it's nowhere, you know, it's, no, it's really not a way to get around that. That's just the, this, that's just what's taking place right now. Now we have a new wave of, of the future with the NFT. So it's like, get educated, be prepared. So let live at five and shout out to Nicholas A. Hanley, for spending time on the Live at Five, I call it the Health, Money, and Music Show because pretty much that's where we are in the world. Uh, you know, based on my subjectivity, leaning on my own understanding, but we all know that we're talking about health in the world, and yeah. absolutely, uh, money is an issue, and definitely, music moves everything. So. Yeah. Man, real talk, real talk. Yeah, so um, shout out to Nicholas. He'll be back on Monday to share more information about NFTs and how music artists are making money digitally. Nichelle, for the, for, the, for the people who don't know, could you explain the definition of NFTs? You know, there are people, you know, they, they know, they think they know, but they don't know. What is an NFT for the people? Absolutely. I'm one of those people that I think I know, but <laughs> go to work. But no, I know it stands for non-fungible token. Boom. So it's not per se that you're using a token like you use, you go to the car wash or to the, or, but you can, you can materialize it. You can create that. It's mm -hmm. just like a book. Like you're about to create a book on kdp.amazon.com. It's yeah. about to be uploaded to Amazon.com. You don't, it's some of the books. I have over 200 books out there. <laughs> I'm about to say something else. <laughs> and I don't have a copy of any of them. I mean, I'm not all of them. I have copies of them. Come on. But I don't have a copy of all of them. You understand? Because they yeah. are selling online. So, you know, I'm not going store to store or door to door, but I do want to mention City Pride Magazine is a, magazine that is all over the greater, greater Los Angeles area and we will have a Hub City Reporter newspaper that will go all over mm. the CPT that be <laughs> you can see that part right there That's so right. in 2022 shout out to the owner Charles Jackson Jr. and the whole team we've been working on uh, a lot of great things so stay tuned absolutely go to work well, it's all, it's all so it, you can transfer what's online into something that that's tangible. So not to say that a non-fungible token cannot be created into something that you can hold literally. Ooh. But as you see, you can go online and look at definitions for NFTs and look at different artists. Like it could be an album, like 
there was uh, Snoop Dogg. He bought his own um, NFT, say there's an album cover, say the jacket, you know, with the dog pound and different things that you see that those are created. Like we looked at them like back in the day, like we were talking about albums. We didn't call them uh, E. Did we, we didn't call them EPs, really. It was no, either, thought, uh, you know me. Forty fives or album. Say that again. Yeah, yeah, that's what. Yeah, and yeah, you know what? Sure. I, I've seen those. I've seen the distinctive clothing. What you're talking about, limited edition type of stuff, mm -hmm. and and wow, it's you know, um, so wow. I am just thinking about. You know, sometimes I just marinate on the things you say, and I'm like, wow. And well, I'm learning them too. So I just share information. I mean, <laughs> I just create everything. I just share a, a plethora of information, like that word plethora. You know, I didn't create that word. <laughs> I like, I love that word. Yeah, I love that word. Plethora you know? is an awful lot. The real talk. Absolutely. Hey. Absolutely. So is that I was thinking about the same thing as far as you think about multiples and we want to multiply. Some people think about adding and subtracting, but we do need to focus on multiplying. How many numbers are out there? It is amazing how many yeah. numbers out there. And I remember I had a, a series going on called Google Plex. How much is Google Plex? What is that? What type of amount is that? And when I looked that up, it was like, because I was really thinking about what they were talking about in this. Uh, as a teacher, we listen for all kinds of information. And I was at the store and they were saying, you call it a Mongol or something, one of those big uh, racks where it holds all these comforters and so forth. And it's from the floor almost up to the ceiling. That's mm -hmm. a serious, that's not your traditional like shoe rack. That's mm -hmm. holding a lot of weight. You understand when you go to Walmart yeah. and these different places and you could, you know, I'll need to write them down some so I'm in that store, right? Go to work <laughs> to see about them sponsoring our show. Absolutely. Go to work. But um, but it wasn't that word. So at any rate, I ran into the word Googleplex and it somewhere on YouTube, it gave a dynamic explanation about imagine so much on a pallet. You know, you work at a warehouse and you put things on yeah. a pallet and you can yeah, only go absolutely. stack it so high and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then imagine pallets upon pallets that reach from Earth to Pluto. Wow. Can you imagine that many, um, <laughs> that much yeah. money? <laughs> you got to be able to stack pallets and pallets is an awful lot. So that's bundles upon bundles upon bundles. Absolutely. Wow. So just imagine what we learn every day is nothing compared to what we can see. Yeah, huh. you know we we what we can see is nothing compared to what we have in our mind, the capacity that we have. So that's why I say, you know, when you look, and rarely do I say, you know, because I'm working on being in the know. I do that when I'm joking or you know using a comedy, but I want to go in different characters sometimes because I'm in a creative room, like I was just sharing with you, and like this puppet that's just watching me and everything. But it's a whole situation that I'm creating in here. So it it does make a difference about the education that we share. Yeah. And that education is facts. We do want, want to stay grounded in reality like Chuck D was just sharing. At the same time, we do want to track information like when we went back to the numbers. And then yeah. I, I wanted to make a correlation to multiplying due to the fact that often back in the day, we kept talking about adding and subtracting how often did we say we want to multiply because we kept saying we want more people we need more people to stand with us we need more people to stand with us that word more is an addition it's a add it's it's dealing with a sum so mm -hmm. but when you multiply then that becomes sporadic it can it can be sporadic right just thinking about the exponent now i'm going into math math to the situation but you think about the exponents on numbers and so forth you, it becomes exponential so that's where we are and like you were saying with it with the um computer technology and so forth that's where we are we can do this so just mm -hmm. imagine how much you can create you want to create a cartoon and you just seen how they reference a metaverse did you see that wow yeah back in the day we were talking about cloning people right 
Yeah. What is that that you're observing? Yeah. That shit happening. Yeah. Real talk. It is actually replicating what real people do. When we see that uh, it's okay mm -hmm. to model what other people do if they're successful, right? Yeah. And that goes back to the beginning. I make connections all day, so I, I can I can continue. But at but any rate, let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Can a person be? This is this you know you know um, one of those things you throw out there. Can a person be negatively successful? Ooh, I would uh, I would say so. Now, why would you? Like why that. did you? What was the causal for you to sh say that? Share that? I don't know because a lot of people look at things from different perspective, and so when people people undermine or you know double cross yeah. backstab whatever whatever, then they're successful. And their negativity undermining, like these. Okay, now, like Chuck D spoke on these record labels. That's what I'm saying. They have been negatively successful, keeping us in the dark. So, mm -hmm. and you feel me on that one? I'm gonna say I understand what you're, what you were just sharing, and I would like to preface this due to the fact. I do have a record company, right? Um, I've yeah. only produced one of my CDs on my record label, okay. right? Okay, so- So you're your own label. That's like me too. I'm the only artist on my label. Is that right? Yes. That's me too. I totally okay. understand. So with that in mind, my uh, thought process is one of these things that at the time, let me just preface this as well. I wanted to create my own beats i want to write the information and i mm -hmm. wanted to be the artist i want to do the whole thing yeah. and have my own record label so that was um uh, that's part of the issue the situation right and mm -hmm. just like with the books i wanted to be create my own beat so i can create my own audio books i've mm -hmm. already written the books you understand me i'm just mm -hmm. learning now how to do the beats right okay. create the own beats um I know I do this Final Cut Pro X, but I'm still learning how to do Pro Tools. But so with that in mind, that's ownership. Now, what we're talking about is intellectual property. You want to own what you do. Let me say this as a record company, not to. Uh, I, well, I'm going to just say what I'm saying. In the beginning. We used to say, again, more, we need to collaborate. We still say that today, technically. We need to collaborate. And when there's more people, say, working together and say we have people that are the business-minded people and then we have the ones that are creative and it's still today. It's some people that say they don't like paperwork. They are not into the administrative portion. And then okay. there's other people that say, I would really appreciate if you would help me with the paperwork and an administrative part. And yeah. so the person that has the administrative part, they have a company, they have a business. So that's what it was before. So technically, I don't think in the beginning it was meant to capitalize on other people. I think they were working together because there was a need from each end, right? Then um, it became people wanted to do, do, learn that they could do everything. And then the people that, like you were saying, negatively capitalized because they noticed that the people wanted to do everything and that was going to push them out of the box to the point where they said, wait a minute, I got to find something else. So I'm going to make this look really good and I'm going to create these contracts that's going to keep them coming to me or keep the uh, benefits coming to me. I That's my personal opinion. The, I um and just to piggyback on what you said, you that's the nice version. <laughs> you, you gave them a, the nice version. That's why we had this show because and, they're and, you know. So you left out a whole bunch of uh you know a whole bunch of cuss words and a whole oh, yeah. bunch of you left out all that because that's uh, that's the stuff that's added to the stuff. And <laughs> if in in a perfect world, yes. 
And yes, but in this world, you can go back to your favorite artist. You can go back to mm. our, our, our parents' favorite artists That's and true. and see how they got on, and see how they took advantage of this and copyrights and royalties and this and that. You know, I, I, I've learned, I previously learned not to name names, but we all know the names and the labels of the, the old school all the way up to the new school. Yeah. And the, the new school labels, they're... They cannot exist without some type of attachment to the old school labels. It's almost like it's almost like mafia related. People think just because these gangsters and these mafia people are not in the limelight anymore, they think mm -hmm. they are not running stuff. They're still running mm -hmm. stuff. They're just retired, but they have say so on everything, and that's the that's the same thing with these. You know the major labels. I don't want to name any labels, but the mm -hmm. major labels that 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 made records. So the that not 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 like DVDs, but records, vinyl. The, the mm -hmm. labels that but the, when the vinyl, mm -hmm. those are the those are the parent labels mm -hmm. that that's running the labels, and that's why nothing's changed because it's a certain structure that they set in place to run the same way for the mm -hmm. generations to come. They just, you know, mm -hmm. now it's just a grandchild. Now the grandchild is running this. You know, in my day, it was, mm -hmm. it was the, um, you know, it was the manager of NWA without saying his name. Mm -hmm. It was, it was the managers like that. It was the managers of, um, 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 the, the group called uh, one of my favorite groups called TLC. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was certain people who who just drove their just misled them mm -hmm. be, because that was the pattern that they were taught, and that's that's what's wrong with everything. Mm -hmm. People, they're they're instead of writing a wrong, mm -hmm. they're they're sticking to the script, and the the script needs to be changed. Mm -hmm. So that we can take it in a different direction. It's almost like a cruise ship, uh, a cruise ship that's lost its rudder. It's mm -hmm. out of it's out it's out of control. It can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's just out in the yeah. ocean. You so, know? do you think the uh, same parent companies are running the NFTs? Pretty much, because it's anything that's money related, yes, it's called mm -hmm. old money. And mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's old money. And how do you think those people keep living the lifestyles that they're living? Who do you think makes the billionaires billionaire? Who pays the billionaires? Somebody right. has to pay the millionaires. The billionaires pay, you know. So, I'd I mean, like to speak to the structure. Um, say, for instance, that this is still taking place today. There's a top-down structure. That's this top-down structure we were talking about, right? Topographical structure, right? So you, the person on the top, is the one that's making the money, right? And it filters down versus right now, like how we're having this show, city, city, not city to city, but city, city. We're wanting to blend. This is linear. I'm just speaking to the, the structure as part of education. Okay. Yeah. So I understand um, what you're saying, that that is what is still taking place today. Absolutely. And then the, the world that I like to live in, which is the one that's peaceful and is filled with unity and love and so forth, that I would like to think that that's how it initiated based yeah. on the need. And, that, and that's how other things are happening, because there is a need to create more unity. It is a need for to create more love. And that is linear. That is not one way. And it's not top of, you know, topographical and so forth for people living on Earth. So yeah. it's just a matter of what do we do now like you said what is it what can we do to create more of a balance if you will what do you suggest, wow. what, do you um, suggest? what would you want as an artist as an artist um well i've i've kind of i've i like i like what i'm doing right now as an artist honestly i control everything mm -hmm. and and i just you know, I like I have music I haven't even released yet. You know, people like, you know, why haven't you released it? Because I don't want to. You know, I like controlling my product, I my creation, 
mm-hmm. myself. I don't, you know, yeah, the big money, that's what you give up. You give up, you know, everything when you bring in the big money. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of unnecessary evil that comes with that stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, I look past the money. You know, I'm not materialistic. I've had money. But um, what, okay, to what to do about it? To the back to your question, what to do about it? It's, it's gotten to the point where it's it's such, it's it's almost like in a, um, in a, in a I don't want to say twilight zone. It's almost like in the Bermuda Triangle, like, you know, where, uh, all kind of crazy stuff is going on. How do you navigate back from the Bermuda Triangle? Mm. That's what you, that's what you're asking me. And it's like, okay, ask yourself, how did we get to the Bermuda Triangle? And then once you start mm. to answer, ask and answer those questions, mm. then maybe you can start to navigate back from the you know, or how to get out of the Bermuda Triangle. So that's where the that's where the music industry is right now. You know. So the, what about this? What if we looked at it like if you could start new, like this, like tomorrow is a new day, and you could have it in the ideal way. What would it look like? You like control. I just heard that. So one that would be part of the situation because that's not going to change from today to tomorrow. So you like control, uh, and it is your intellectual property, and you want people to buy your music, absolutely, yeah. and you yeah. want that music to have reverberate into the future for generations to come, yeah. and you want it to continue to be acknowledged. So mm. what else might it be that you would want if you had it in an ideal way, an ideal world, and it starts tomorrow. Wow, that's a question. Hmm. That's a question the average person would have to marinate on. And I could say something that would be false just to give you an answer, you know? Mm, gotcha. But, Absolutely. Um, but if to wake up tomorrow, at, um, one, People getting paid properly for their creativity. Gotta be, gotta be a perfect world, you know. Um, and and um, that's that's, uh, that's actually thinking optimistically. Absolutely. I mean, that's yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, because you know, in the music world, that's that's what a lot of the conflicts and the beef they tend to stem from. People not getting royalties. People not getting their due. People not getting their respect. Um, I would, uh, uh, in a perfect world, you know, it, it, it's, th- there's not a competition. See, people don't understand this as a, as an artist, as a music artist, mm-hmm. as a rapper. See this, that's, this, this, that's why I said there's a difference as a rapper. You feel that you have to compete with the next rapper. You feel you have to, you know, always put your skills on display. But as a music artist, you're busy creating, you know, masterpieces. You know, like if you think of the great artists like Picasso, Michelangelo, you know, all the other, all the other ones who got names for doing art, they were never in competition. Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 you know, the the greats are never in competition with the greats. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't see, you don't see Julio Cesar Chavez, the boxer. You don't see him in competition with Muhammad Ali. You don't right. see you don't see Mike mm-hmm. Tyson in competition with George mm-hmm. Foreman. You know right. they, they they were greats, so they were they were greats. So right. it's it, it's about legacy thing. And so in the perfect world, we're talking about perfect world. Mm-hmm. You know, and and in any situation, you would eliminate the negative. Right. You know, Yes. You, you would eliminate the uh the, the battles you know there's there, like the verses that you know they coming up with this thing called the verses now Ver- mm-hmm. this versus that that's that's low key a battle that's just they always have a new uh, they always have a way of trying to change things and mm-hmm. and and things still remain the same mm-hmm. so you know i'd never get involved 
with with the battles because mm -hmm. someone is going to take it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. So you don't make it a contest. You make it a display of artistry. You right. know, like, okay, I've been to, I think, uh, I, I, I forgot the, I think it's called the Five Points, the Five yeah. Points Youth yeah. uh, Foundation. Well, Foundation where Silky D is, right? Mm -hmm. Now, this is the perfect picture, right? Mini, yeah. based on Mini to clarify as the ambassador. Yes, she's the ambassador. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. Now, okay. that alley where you see all those artists painting their mm -hmm. artwork, their, their, their murals, their, yes. they, they're not in competition with each right. other. Mm -hmm. They come. They come to display. Hey, my creativity. This is this is my contribution. Right. So, uh, just speaking on a perfect world. I'm trying to stay in the same realm where you're saying yeah. when you wake up in a perfect world. Right. You that was a great example. Yes. Yeah. And 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 when you eliminate the competition, mm -hmm. and you, and you compensate people accordingly. That eliminates a lot of the negativity. Wow, you eliminate the competition right. yes. and, and compensate people accordingly. Absolutely. Because how many billions, I mean, you're a record label. Mm -hmm. how, many, you, 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 how many billions, you know, what's past billions? Trillions? Okay, what's past? So I don't understand why they don't compensate the artists. I don't understand why they hold on to the artists is uh, creativity. I don't understand, mm. but it's because they have negative intentions. So All right, let's that, talk about that. Absolutely. In, in a perfect world, I would eliminate that. I'm just, I'm right. trying to stay in the yes. same realm, but go ahead, yes. go ahead. Absolutely. So I was gonna make a co connection to that. You know, back in the day, we, we talked about capitalists and okay. people monopolizing things. So mm -hmm. it's on that nature, you know, in that nature with those dealing with the, um, if you will, not only cause and effect, but supply and demand. So economics. So this is another situation that's dealing with economics. Okay. So that's why, like Chuck D was saying, we need somebody grounded in reality. Where is it stemming from? And if. And was that you not talking about that too on the Monday show, the live at five or something about uh, we can get around? Oh, Reverend Shaw or somebody was saying, I'm so sorry. No, I was, a, I was speaking yeah. on accountability. Emotions. Yeah. If we can get past the emotions when it does deal with creativity in comparison, it's different. You have, you, you need to be uh, emotionally sound and emotionally connected to whatever you're doing in your creativity. That's true. But it's the way, the manner in which the emotions get out of whack when it goes into comparing, because comparing goes into competition. That's true. So it, it now that becomes uh, like cause and effect. So yeah, so it's all about perspectives. From that point, from that right there, it's a perspective. Because if a person is 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 spitting his creativity from a negative perspective, then he's going to get negative results. Mm -hmm. So that's on that individual artist or those group of artists who choose to engage in that negative uh, a, a form of artistry. You know, uh, um, uh, like I say, it's a, it's a touchy situation because um, because there are a lot of people who who like to uh, get on the microphone and crush. You know, back in the day, they call it crush, crush the MC mm. or or and, and that's cool. And, and, and but you know why would you say it's cool no I, I'm, I'm saying I, I was i was going to say something you know add a little something to it i was saying that's cool but what you don't realize the the that what comes around go around so when you crush you're going to get crushed and that's pretty much any and every artist that has come through there's always been an artist that has come out that's better than you or you feel that is you're in competition with you know, that's in any profession, you know, even like comedians. I remember there was a uh, one of my favorite comedians felt hit, threatened. Well, a lot of our favorite comedians felt threatened by up and coming comedians. Mm. And, it's, and it's like, what? This is not a, it's about me trying to make my mark. Why do you feel threatened? And, mm. and, and it's because the industry has a way 
of adding that ingredient to um you know for the ratings type of thing mm-hmm. you know it's, mm-hmm. it's almost like a um I, I don't know. It's like an extra seasoning on the food that don't yeah. care, like that extra salt or something like that that's helping yeah. people get blood, high blood pressure. I yeah. got you. So yeah. in a perfect world, that's when you would eliminate stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You, you, it's almost like it's almost it's almost like the executives becoming they come executives for all the wrong reasons. I mean, the top I'm talking about the ones who pay the millionaires. Mm. I'm not talking about us. You know, I own my own label, so I consider myself an executive. But my bank account says, hey, my bank account says different. But I'm talking about the people in the, the high rise buildings and those, you know, glass buildings, those executives with the millions and the billions, mm-hmm. you know, though, you know, they don't they don't want things to change. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's like if it's not broken to them, if it's not broken, you know, don't fix it. And they'd rather they'd rather they'd rather uh, pour their millions into into the industry negatively. Do you, can you imagine in the perfect world? We're going back to the perfect world. Can you imagine where the music industry would be if all of those things I just spoke on, if they were actually came to play, where the pe- the billionaires, the, you know, they did things, you know, it, w- it would be. But then again, <laughs> it'd be La La Land, a different world. Mm, yes, and that was going to take me absolutely. So I can't imagine because I was going to. Uh, I'm saying it now that based on I love sports too, and people there's a plethora of people that I know that you know as well that play sports. And shout out to esports amateurs competitors league as well. That's a form of sports, and it is using fine motor skills. But to mm-hmm. note that as a playing sports that's a form of competition as well so yeah some people could look at music as a sport oh, i started really? looking at books as a sport i have 215 books at but it, who am i in the competition with nobody but myself exactly so so now i i've never i've i've never looked at music as a sport but wow, that's eye opening that people could look at it as a sport. Because first of all, why would you look at it as a sport? Because a sport is a sport. And then you would say because of the competition. Well, that's the problem. But that's here's the other thing: is the endorphins. It is they. We could take it to this notion. Two things: the mindset. Okay. What mindset are you operating in at that time? Because there's more than one type of mindset, right? Yeah. So in and then there's yeah, you're right. And then there's other people who glean, or shall we say, they are more prone to a certain type of intelligence. Some people like nature. Some people, you know, like the out- outdoors. But then there's other people that are are just visual. They want to just observe more so than being in it like can it using kinesthesiology or kinesthetics rather and out there and about and doing the playing the sports some people are more in tune with their creativity and create music sitting sitting or standing you know and then they may incorporate the dancing and doing more uh kinesthetics so those those are still dealing with endorphins and that's physiological in everyone those are those good feeling Uh You know feelings that you feel in what you're doing, what you what you love, and okay. it's well, everything you can. So if we can get back to that in the real world. That would be part of how we can make things better. What is it that is making you feel good about the music? Like Chuck D was saying, when you start really getting into the music, not the music, uh, the subsidiaries of the music, but the real core of the music. Where is yeah. that coming from? That comes okay. from the real place. Yeah. Right, now, right. now, the, now the previous comments, the previous comments were in a world that we would like. You know, yes. I just want to clarify that. Yes. You know, the perfect world is what we were calling it. Ideal so, world. Ideal yeah, world. Ideal world. Now, okay. uh, uh, with what you say, with now the question is what with my music. Can you answer that question one more time, please? I was making a comment. Okay. But, yeah. um, I want, to wrap yeah. this around is the part portion of 
tomorrow, let's start with that, <laughs> to recap that portion. If we was to start with tomorrow, and what would be your ideal music industry facet? What would be taking Okay, place? a reality now, or we're in a perfect world? In an ideal world. That's okay. like, like you want to call it a perfect world. Okay, but we, uh, yeah, we had elaborated on that. And then you yes, had and then I went back and made some connections to real world, how we yeah. could actually make it happen based on the physiology of the human body. I mean. <laughs> I started but, making connections. Literally, we all have endorphins, every human being on this earth. So we start getting back to what all humans have, the capacity of, and what influences the music industry innately. That's where that comes from. It, even the people that don't make the music that's making the money behind it, they have endorphins running around in their head. But like you said in the beginning, they're neg some people are negative. Exactly. Many people are negatively benefiting from the music industry because they yeah, do exactly. like to operate in a, in a matter of capitalizing on other people's gifts and talents. On purpose. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and and like I say, it, it that that's why, I, and 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 back to 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 what I'm doing with my music. That's why I like being in full control because I don't like the, I don't like being the puppet, you know. And and music is my therapy. You know, a lot of people get into music. They create music um, for different reasons. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, it's always been my therapy. It's 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 something that I um it's a stress relief mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so I, um I'm one of I'm I'm real different I'm really unique I'm one of the few people who really don't look to profit off of his music even though um I know that my music is valuable and it's worth something I do know that mm -hmm. but I just want to change the direction I, mm -hmm. I want to change the direction that it has um, gotten off course into. You know, of course, I, I you know, we, you know, we need to round table and brainstorm about that mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. but, um, a lot of that just has to do with the people that finances the industry, and that's mm -hmm. you know, just, I'm just saying. So how do we, how do you deal with a monster? who doesn't want to be, who, who wants to remain a monster, you know? Well, what about this? So how about circumventing that situation in a matter of who is purchasing, per, uh, focus on who's purchasing your music? Who is focus, purchasing you know, the advertising music? of your, advertisement of your music. And that's something that we don't talk about much of, or, you know, in the black community about advertising. Okay, when you say purchasing my music, um, when I when I released a couple of singles on a Muse, that's a distribution uh, a, a, them for distribution and Symphonics, I realized that my music reached, it went worldwide actually. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a message to different people worldwide in my music. Mm -hmm. uh, so as far as like trying to I really don't even want to be involved with the record with the labels with the I just don't I don't care about the millions of dollars I really don't care about that stuff I just want my music out there mm -hmm. where people can enjoy it nice you know for whatever now yeah. I write various types of music mm -hmm. because I've been through various walks of life Mm -hmm. but I don't, I don't want, I don't want to be controlled. I don't want people telling me, you know, the music labels, they tell you what type of music to write. Mm -hmm. I got yeah. you. I'm with you. That's why I'm a self-published author because yeah, I can write what I want to write. And, yeah. and it's therapy for me as well. And at the same time, you know, many of the books you can go look, it's, it's $3. Two dollars, oh. three, one dollars, because I just wanted to get my message out there and to help people. That's what I'm saying. Too. And so I understand that thoroughly. 
So it's just a matter, it's on a platform, you know, Amazon.com that connected with the Barnes and Nobles and all these different places and so forth. And mm -hmm. I did get the opportunity to select what royalty and so forth. And I just, that became a sport. Oh, I'm going to do 35% on this one. I'm going to do 70% on this one. This type of thing. It wasn't even really like um, a business plan. And some people are like, uh, 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 uh. okay. But at the same time, as an artist, as an author, artistic author that's what i was doing i heard that and then it was a sport to me okay that one week i wrote 99 books oh this is, i you know shut down the phone wow. and everything like that it was like i want to get to this number i want to see 200 99. that was just me you know what i mean so it's just a matter of what do you want to do yeah and real talk and that's what it's always been you know so and, when you talk and come from yourself, you there's in is innate motivation. The other thing that's happening that unfortunately causes seem, seems to cause other issues is because of the carrot danglers. You yeah. know, you know those uh, people are buying in, into the carrot danglers versus looking at like you know what is it that you really want? What's in it? What's in here? Why do you want you know twenty? You know. <laughs> well, you know, but it's just a matter of what is it that you want for yourself? So that's why some people say, why do you need a, a record label? Why? Because they're yeah, going to exactly. have their own criteria. They're going to have their own uh, agenda. So yeah. why do you feel that way? So that's the other thing we need to get, get to. There's a thing that there's, uh, you talk about independence and some people are codependent. Some people feel like they have to be with something else or they you know an entity when they're working on their craft and that's true you know that's a trip i could i could i could um i could think of a few beefs you know industry beefs that has started from that right there and 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 you know um one person is with a label and one person's independent mm -hmm. where's the beef so I, you know, well, why are y'all? You go, you you get, you're both getting money, y'all both. Why is there beefing? So there's somebody stirring that up. Why are people with? Why are the haves beefing? I always thought the haves beef with the have nots, but nowadays you got the haves beefing with the haves. You got millions, I got millions. You know, you I I, I don't understand it. It's you know, uh, like I say, it's well. That's the that's the thing. That's where we need to go. Where when you say you don't understand something, I don't understand everything myself. I'm just want to say. But what I thought about at that time frame is where is it coming from? What is the, what is the cause? Some people it, it does have a lot to deal with their background experience some a lot of it also has to deal with whatever their current situation what what they're involved in at the time because then then that's um you know what the decisions that they're gonna make and how they it, feel it goes back to the old saying um drama sales you know mm -hmm. um you know uh that's why they have these a lot of these reality shows they're trying to you know, they're trying to push numbers, push units. They're trying to, and everybody's sacrificing morals. They're sacrificing the the, the natural God-given things that you have for things that you hope to get. You, you're hoping this works. You're hoping, you know, but the, the, the lack of self-respect that the industry creates, you know, it's almost like, you have to check your self-respect at the door. You know, mm. you, don't, you know, it's like, are you going to get in the industry? Yeah, you check your self-respect and then be ready to go down this, just, you know, the, the rabbit hole type of stuff. You know what I mean? Mm. And it's, it's, it's sad. That's, that's, you know what? I have to be honest. That's one of the main reasons I really, I'm, I'm, I'm a music artist. I'm not a rapper. Mm. I'm a music artist. I'm glad you blessed me to meet certain people so that I could become an artist. I mean, um, mm -hmm. an actor. 
Mm-hmm. And you know, get in this industry and then get into another industry, which is probably the same, but not as you know, in a, but a different a different entity. Mm-hmm. But um, the with the music industry, it's like I, I've heard this said before. It's worse than the drug game. It's worse than the it's worse than the drug game mm. because in the drug game. The the negative people, the bad people in the drug industry really were bad people. But in the music industry, you got people who are not really bad, acting like they bad only because they financially control you. And then they're playing games with your life, your livelihood. You know, like you ever heard of an artist get put on a shelf? Mm -hmm. Same same thing. He, you know, they they put him in a studio. You know, they get him all hyped up, whatever. And then they put his music on the shelf. They control him. And that's what it is. They want to control you. And mm-hmm. I refuse to be controlled. I, I, I don't know how else to say it. Um, family, mm-hmm. I, I just refuse right. to be controlled. No matter, I don't care if I don't make the millions. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I've had I've had thousands. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you can only spend so much. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that's just where I'm at, family. You know, I, mm-hmm. I know I, I tend to get deep on shit, but that's just where I'm at. <laughs> right, me too. I'm like, I start talking about <laughs> neuroscience and everything like yeah. that. So we're, we talk about music, but that's where it's at. A lot mm-hmm. of it is, is physiological. It is neurological. So with that in mind, we want to also shine a light on the teamwork. Where is the teamwork? We named the show City City because it's not City to City. We want to blend City to City, not City to City or nothing like that. It's just City City. City City. That's any city. That's teamwork, right? Any City City, you know? So we're going to be always in two different cities. City City. Teamwork. Trying to get this, you know, trying to, trying to, you know, trying to get to the, to the core of what we need to do to make the, the, the proper changes. I believe that's what City City uh, team workers about. You know, mm-hmm. um, certain things, if they aren't talked about, how can we make the certain changes? And I like how you keep it on a scholastic perspective because that will elevate a person's thought process. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? A lot of people don't, they don't think about certain things until it's put upon them. And I'm like, wow. So I really like how you do your thing. You do what you do <laughs> to go to work. You know and what I'm saying? Dollar sign, go to work. You're like in a, um, what is that world you live in? Go to work, that fake world. <laughs> no, the, uh, the, world. the uh, proper world or perfect world. But, you know, and I was just commenting, you know, if uh, in a perfect world, you know, I was, you know, things would be like this. You know, the world that we live in would be certain. So I wasn't trying to, you know, poke fun at anybody. I'm just saying, I've never had the pleasure of living in the perfect world and a lot of other people haven't. I'm not saying that you live in a perfect right. world or anybody else. I'm exactly. just saying in a perfect world, things would be like this. Things, would, mm-hmm. you know, our government, our, the, our government would be split in half. You know, we would get along because it would be about the United States of America as a country Mm -hmm. versus one perspective versus another perspective. So, I mean, you know, just, you know, just. Let's say this. There is this thing called dualism. So Hmm. part of some of this information based on what we're talking about stereotypically Unfortunately, like you said, drama is breeds negativity. Most of the time in the world is negativity. Ne- negativity. Negativity. We want to yeah. focus on more positivity. There you and, go. And remember, like you know, there's different numbers and so forth, like seven positive, negate, one negative, and so forth. And so how often are you gonna have to say something positive to negate the negativity and so forth when the negativity is like a weed and it just goes all over the place, you know, sporadically in multiples, bundles and everything. But when you talk about something that's just you know on the straight and narrow or you know, focus or something like that, it takes so much to 
you know, bring that, you know, that, that, um, negativity down and so forth. So it is this time that we do need more people in media to share more positivity, objectivity. And what about mm -hmm. all of the mu the cartoons? What about those books? We talk about the music from back mm -hmm. in the day, but what about all those books that did teach those moral lessons, those really character positive. building books? We don't talk about much of that. Well, we got mm -hmm. media talking about more positivity. They say it's the media that's helping to get yeah. spread the word. So why don't we use it properly yeah. Yeah. and spread more? Um, that's why I took down a lot of I like that. Some of those other uh shows and everything and different things, <laughs> but it's all good. I'm telling you, but like the CDs, I'm going hard in the paint, but it's it's reality, it's some real situation. Why yeah. is it but you know, continue? But but continue, family. And what with the what I mean, that's a that's a different audience you're talking to. And True. you're you're blessed to be creative enough to reach a multitude of audiences. Yeah, because you know, see, and some, some people, people they don't understand it, some won't. Yeah, see, see, because some people like like okay, when I first was an artist, I was talking to this type of people. That's a small group of people that's in the streets that's doing that negative shit. But when you start talking about some reality type stuff, that's a mm -hmm. different audience. But you are still speaking to different groups of people. So regardless of how you spit your message, it's being received. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And, right. and even though Queen G, um, CPT, was coming hard in the paint, you never negatively came hard in the paint. You've always came educated, educationally hard in the paint. You know, you might have to tell niggas, yeah, this is the fuck who I am. Woo, 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 woo. You niggas, for you niggas, don't, for you niggas, that's woo, 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 woo. Now, let me bring your ass from where you're at and put you on some real shit. This is our deep queen, uh, queen GCP2. You feel me? And that's what I admire about you because. You don't went down to the darkest of, of the hoods and like, nigga, I'm right where you at. Nigga doing the same type of rap you doing. Now, let me show you some shit. Everybody can't say that. You feel me? Everybody can't say, I don't I, I can go over here and, and get down on this fool's level, talk his language, and show him a different language. And then show him to the light. See, that's a blessing, family. And and mm -hmm. that's what I believe we're here to do, what we've been doing. I've watched you do it. That's why I'm like, okay, I'm uh, it's a pleasure to be interning or you know, a team uh, uh, uh you know, you know, the co-host or whatever, you know, our well, situation. Thank you is. for acknowledging that though. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, because I mean that I, I I'd be wrong if I did. <laughs> I trust mm -hmm. that I'd be wrong if I didn't, because you have been an educator from day one. So yeah. I believe I, that's my calling is to teach. I, I really everywhere, yeah. just like earlier today, I was like, you could rename your video right now by the upper right hand three dots right there, you know. Boom. And and and, and that's what I'm saying. I I receive I now somebody else would have told me that I'd be like, okay, well, show me that. But when you was like, no, right now, I was like, oh, you mean go ahead, okay. It see, there's always a message. Within what you're saying, you're like, look, look, nigga, right now, do that shit right. <laughs> but the way you say it, you know, the, words. Yo, <laughs> <doesn't it look laughs> the way you say it, so I, you know, it's, you know, it's it's very. You, I like how you put you put it so it can be receptive to a lot of people who aren't aware of shit they should be aware of. You know what I'm saying? That's Yo, a sensitive area. That. Absolutely. Yeah, because yeah, you know, I could have said it a different kind of way though. You know? Oh, and and really ruin a person, really, really right. make a person like, oh damn. You know, because I'm like, you one know, of those... that's why it's best that I keep thinking all the time. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. yes, I and mean, as much as I wear my emotions on my sleeve, I'm still very considerate and mm -hmm. I do understand, you know, it's the manner in which you deliver messages. I've been doing that for a long time. You know, this is my 23rd year teaching. Somebody had to teach me that. Somebody told me that, you know, back in the day, the way yeah. you delivered messages, not just even to children, but to adults, because you're going to have to work with staff and colleagues and so forth. 
You know, I was in college when I even learned the word colleagues. I was already in college. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was in there with that. colleagues and before I went before I even learned that word. Hey, so how can we push that right there, what you just were speaking on? To to help people to see, get, you know, to get out of their feelings. You know, it's not personal. See, you might have to get somebody else because I stay in mine. But 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 <laughs> if the, and see that that it could be our this show could be both of our therapies because we both we we both have, are guilty of being in our emotions and or you know being or yeah but if we but speak I'm gonna say this it, look if we yeah. had more people that were in their emotions versus their topical mass then we would have a different situation because some people are operating based on what somebody else said. Some people are operating yeah. based yeah. on the dynamics of what they think it's supposed to be. Some people yeah. are operating on another level just because yeah. they want the status quo. But if they were yeah. truly operating as a real person and true to their being, their human being, their physiological feelings at a certain time and, and base that upon what they think and what they rationalize because of what they truly feel, they would be a real person. They would be able to explain what they're feeling versus acting out. But yeah, but that, that's that's that's. Let me true. say that's this too, the, the, because you, I can say that. I can say this. We want to really, when we do act out, we want to profit off of it. So I acted out when I did those comedy CDs. But thanks to Ur7, shout out to Ur7. He really put that together. He put the music together. He put that old school, the, the speakeasy situation on there and made it a whole different type, you know, a whole yeah. feel. You know what I'm saying? That's what the engineer does. That's what he does. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and and so you learn and, and you learn something. And that's what a lot of artists, a lot of artists, uh, they... I would, they should, um, what do you, I want to know, what do you learn from your experience doing music? You know, not just how to do this and how to do that, because your music is touching people. Mm -hmm. So has your music touching people changed you? Because like okay, like when I perform a song called Help, and I perform a song called um, Bent but Not Broken, mm -hmm. you know, that's me being vulnerable. See, mm -hmm. a, a lot of artists they're not trying to be vulnerable. They're not trying to be like, hey, I went through some stuff. When the guy was broke, you, you, you oh, when they rich, when they balling, when they got mm -hmm. like four mansions and they can go to the moon and and, and back and they can buy this and. Oh, you hear about all that old shit, but you don't hear about when they was broke starving, mm -hmm. when, you know, they damn near gave up type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's 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 what I want to know from artists. You, mm -hmm. that, I believe that's an avenue that's less traveled. And if we as journalists, because this mm -hmm. is the journalist coming out of me, mm -hmm. because I can I want to ask you. Not you, but mm -hmm. I want to ask the artist as a journalist, you know, mm -hmm. from a journalist perspective. Mm -hmm. Speak on the hard times. Don't don't speak on, yeah, I want to give a shout out to so and so. Speak on the person that the one, you know, speak on when you almost gave up. Speak on what made you hold on. Speak on mm -hmm. the hard times. Mm -hmm. type of stuff. I believe that's the avenue that every entertainer, every mm -hmm. artist, every CEO, everybody has went down that street where, you know, they have a story to tell before. I want to hear the before your ass made the money. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't care about, you know, your billions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I hear about the broke ass Beyonce? <laughs> the broke ass Jay Z, the broke yeah. ass, you know, and and why did you continue? How did you? Mm -hmm. That's the encouraging stuff. That's all I'm saying. Oh, I got right. it. I don't need to get up. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but that's the encouraging stuff. Sometimes I tend to get in my little zone and shit. I didn't mean to get up, mm -hmm. but um, yeah. So 
as a journalist, I want to dig into, I want to, that's what I want to dig into. If I was sitting here, if I was one of them old CBS or um, 60 Minutes journalists mm-hmm. talking, talking to someone, if I was Charlemagne, I, I'd be like, I'll, I'll be digging be mm-hmm. b- before the money. Right. And Because when you dig before the money, it'll mm-hmm. tell you why the person is acting the way they acted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. You feel me well, on that one? Technically, I can speak to it a bit. I know I have one single. <laughs> no, really. I have a couple of uh, songs out there, though, actually. But um, I would say affect. It is the affect. What has, you know, what people have said to me, especially the people that didn't know that I cuss, they mm-hmm. didn't know. And while they was saying what they were saying and how they were saying it, and then when they heard me say it, they was like, oh, now we know. Absolutely. Because I was coming from a real place, you know, sharing a message about real information. That's where that mm-hmm. came from. So, it affected them in a way where they felt like, wow, they were, some of them were shocked and some were like, you know, why are you, why are you got to do that type of thing? But all the while, like Dino Brown, that was so funny. He was once upon a time, you know, a co-host on the show back in the day. And uh, he used to say, if people could ride in the car with you, they would see somebody totally different because when you get down here to this radio station, <laughs> Yeah. The conversation changes. It's yeah. like you know how to code switch on real. He said, I've never seen nothing like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, you, you know what? <laughs> the Bay Area, we see everything. But hey, you- uh, Rory, uh, Pastor Rory's cousin told me the same thing. We was in the truck going to the show, and we was on some whole different conversation. But when mm-hmm. we got down to the radio station, he was like, he was looking at me because he wasn't on camera, but he was looking at me like, is this the same nigga that I was in the car talking? <laughs> like you said, right? Hey. <laughs> it was just funny. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God. And Dino told oh. me one day, he said, you don't like people on the freeway with you, huh? Or something. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. But I was just like, oh my gosh. And the times that, oh, I wish we would have videotaped the times that, um, that I would pick up Peanut. Mm, oh, yeah. the car ride we had. Oh my gosh. That yeah. was. That that would that would have been absolutely viral before viral was even out or whatever that you know yeah. that was, you know what we do today. But oh my gosh, it was so funny. Yeah. Oh man. But that goes to, to being vulnerable. You know what I mean? Just like right now, um, uh, that's part of the response of what you're journaling right now, what you're sharing and what you're asking. To be mm-hmm. vulnerable, some people don't know that yeah. that's is strength in that. Yeah, you're right. Um, so you're right. absolutely. Some people they don't like to, you know, want you know, they don't want rather not show you that they're human and that they cry sometimes, you know. Or to show that, you know, they, you know, like I can apologize for, you know, I didn't say something or um, I knew I could have said something, I withheld it. And then when you share it, you know, that, that is strengthening that because, you know, to be vulnerable, it it takes a lot. It it can, it can take a lot of strength because, you know, it came from, it comes from a real place. A vulnerable place. Yeah. And that, like I was speaking on the song, Help and Bent But Not Broken. Mm-hmm. That 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 my weakness, my weakness when I wrote those songs was my weakness became someone else's strength. Mm-hmm. So when I realized that my weakness became someone else's strength, mm-hmm. that weakness wasn't a weakness anymore. Mm. So you know, you I mean, know what? Just, I'm glad huh? you said that because I'd like to it's, shout out. Oh my gosh, G Bizzo. Of my song, Heavenly Father, that I used to play all the time at the top of the show. Yes, you yes. You know, once I got yes. a chance when he finally came to the show, that he, and, and it's, it's a trip to grow up with his brother. His brother was in my class in sixth grade and, mm. and everything. So this is from way back, right? But I didn't I didn't know G. Bizzo, right? He's younger than um his brother. And mm. so shout out to Amon. He's always so supportive. But um on the social media, I tell you. 
that I didn't know he didn't tell me that it wasn't a song that he really promotes. I just knew that you know he's from Compton and you know mm -hmm. I love this song, Heavenly Father. I love that song. Came, that was another that's a song that represents he came from a real place. He was that's a at a portion of uh, at a time that he it exemplifies he was being vulnerable at the time, but I played that song for years. I heard that. The and, top of the uh, show. And it's like yeah. it, it took him, it was about two years. I have been playing that song before he even sat in the chair as a guest on my show. Wow. You so know what? I understand that. It, it brought strength to <laughs> my show. You know what I mean? Wow. I'm like, G Bizzle. Absolutely. Go to work radio wow. show on Accelerated Radio. Wow. That's G Bizzle song, Heavenly Father. Oh. At the top and of you know what? Maybe we ought to, maybe we ought to, you know, give him a rotation next, next, next part, next show. Absolutely. You know, just on the strength because so sure. you know, our um, everybody that we've met on the Go to Work show, mm -hmm. we still family. We still monitor right. them. We still support them. There's nobody. There's never no family dispute where oh so and so I don't deal with them. No, mm -hmm. we support. You know, I think Peanuts in Atlanta. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Keisha Kelly's doing her thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Dino Brown. You know, we thank God. You know what I'm saying? Dino Brown mm -hmm. is still. You know, him yes. blessed. Still doing this, but we, we we still one big family. You know, I haven't talked mm -hmm. to uh my former co-host Pastor Rory, but mm -hmm. I still got mad love for the mm -hmm. brother. You know, we we're, we're just doing what we're doing in life. So absolutely, you know, and here's the thing: the we have. yes, and this is this is a trip now that uh we were the last. No, no, it was a couple other people, but at different time frames, we would go on the show. And we would have a show, right? And we'd have another mm -hmm. guest and so forth. And shout out to Rare Breed. I'm sure he's going to see oh, yeah. this too. Because oh, yeah. Praise, Praise Is Up was the next show, the next song that I, yes. I spent hours. You know, it was multiple shows that, you know, Praise Is Up. So mm -hmm. shout out to Rare Breed's uh, Lay My Burdens Down CD. Lay yes. My Burdens Down CD. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So between those uh, two at the top of the show, you know, and then God's gift. We wind up. Did we do a video? We didn't do a video for God's gift. We did. Uh, we did. I mean, you know, uh, help for help. No, we were. Uh, we were supposed to do the video for Bent but not broken. But I couldn't. I could not catch up with my 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 uh, my family member Carla Kane. She uh -huh. is the young lady. That, yeah, she she. I mean, uh, but this is before. You know, we all know. Well, I've shared with the family that she's gone home to be with the Lord. But this was before she had gone home to be with the Lord. We have we were having trouble catching up with her because right. you know she was going through ups and downs and her trials and tribulations. So right. that's why we took we pictures downtown LA. Yeah. And mm. yeah. So um, I still I, I plan on you know my thing with a lot of the videos was financing. I like to be able to mm -hmm. you know pay my videographer such Don't as work. yourself and other Thank people you absolutely you know, to, 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 so that you know we can have fun you know nobody wants yeah. to be worried about getting you know compensated when they're doing the doing the work but that's right so i really still want to do that video and i want to do it as a tribute to her yeah you know and um you know god has put it on my heart to just make sure that i just keep her name alive you know she's mm -hmm. gone through so much mm -hmm. and you know what's the funny thing, Michelle? I had to, I had to, I had to just want to speak on this real briefly. A lot of people that knew her, I didn't know they knew her until mm. she went home. Wow! And then every like a lot of artists, like 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 the baby brother King Dope, mm. he was one of the main people. Like what? Like, what? damn, no, I don't know you knew the homegirl like that. He was like, man, that's my little sister. That was my right. people's. Yes. So you never know the effect that the people around you have on you until they're mm -hmm. gone. You mm -hmm. feel me? So I just want to say love on everybody. That's you right. Know? Absolutely. Love, you know, mm -hmm. and, and appreciate the people that that's have right. been there because they don't have to be there. You know, mm -hmm. you know, just a little message for the, you know, since mm -hmm. we're throwing out little nuggets here and there, just a little That's message right. and stuff. And you know, um, we, it's not a, it's not a bad thing because um, she's always here with us, and, right. and she's blessed to be in my venting video. Mm. And 
She's blessed to be in my but not broken song. Okay. So all I gotta do is play it. She's right here. And you yes, know, sir. you know, just keeping it real, we all have our time. So yes. you know, when you understand that reality, you know, back to reality, everybody got a date. Everybody got a date. So her date just came a little early than the rest of ours. So mm -hmm. I can say mm -hmm. that with a smile on my face now. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not mad or sad, or I can mm -hmm. say that with a smile because. I already know I'm going to see her again in the next life. But mm -hmm. that's, we just keep it real, Michelle. And that's, just, that was a time that I went through. And the song, now, it's, 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 I didn't know that when I wrote the songs, that mm -hmm. that was, you know, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Right. You never know. Yeah. You never know. And yeah. so, yeah. Absolutely. So, but so anyway, yeah, that's being vulnerable, absolutely, yeah. right there. So, and, and just... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, and then one more point I wrote about as a journalist, Anthony Rush, you know, the journalist, Anthony Rush. Um, I have a book called Journey to Stardom Productions. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, that book is called, uh, wait a minute, Journey to... Oh, my gosh. Look, I have so many books, but I have the book. <laughs> Lord Jesus. It's this book called um, Lord Jesus. It's a book <laughs> that deals with everything about what you said. Broke. Um, oh, my gosh. I had to look up the book. Man. But it was. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, hey, you got I don't know the names of all these books I have, but the message. Yeah, 215 is, titles. You can't think of all the titles. 215, no, 219. Literally, because I mean, it's out there to help other people, not to, you know, just like having all the different titles that people want to give me and so forth. It's about the message and helping people and, you know, educating people. It's more so about educating people. Some people get it mixed up with it's just that I'm helping people. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing is helping them. I'm educating people. So, yeah. And it, because it's a pet peeve to me, you know, it does bother me what people say sometimes, but in, in a generality, because I want people to understand education comes first. And that's what, that's rare that they say first. They, the first thing they want to say, oh, she's always helping people. I'd rather them say she's always educating people. You see what I'm saying? It's a difference to me. Yeah, but Michelle, anybody that knows you knows that that's what you already do. You're always. Well, I wish they would people. say that instead of making it seem like it's something negative. You know what I mean? The, the, it's the tone, maybe. And that, that's why I said it the way I said it just now. I'm just but you know what? Your place. Uh, you know what? I, I, I learned this when I was on vacation, this term that's going to apply perfectly what you're saying. And I was on vacation. And the lieutenant told me, because I was getting ready to go to the hole on some shit. He's like, your ass is not receptive to counseling. You feel me? So you can't help that people are not receptive to your counseling. They have to step up and make themselves, no, not step up. They have to humble themselves and become receptive to your counseling because you're trying to educate their ass. That's what they don't understand. And it's not your fault that they don't understand that. But if they want to educate and step them game up, then humble yourself because that's, I mean, the show, I learned that shit in like 2000. Mm -hmm. Maybe 2001, maybe 1999. Mm -hmm. But I remember when I was faced, and, and, and you know, for the people out there that have been on vacation, the lieutenant was about to send my ass to Pelican Bay. Now, everybody don't know about Pelican Bay, but mm -hmm. I was such a firecracker when I was a youngster. Mm -hmm. He was like, okay, I tried talking to you, mm -hmm. but, but you're not receptive to counseling. You got one more incident and your ass is headed to Pelican Bay. You talking about someone who became receptive to counseling after he said that? Oh. <laughs> that, so when somebody is trying to teach you something, that's them counseling you. Mm -hmm. When your ass is not trying to receive it, you're mm -hmm. not being receptive to counseling and here come the consequences. Mm -hmm. There I it is. See. 
You know, You've always been in, in my situation, I'm receiving that information, trust and believe. Oh, and I appreciate the compliment as well. I do want to say, out of being vulnerable and so forth, the part for is what do I want people to say or what I prefer people to say, that comes from, you know, I do have a situation with it. I can be prideful at times. I can be uh, stubborn at times. That's true. And I do like to hear things that are more uh, appeasing and appealing to me at times. Just like they say, mm -hmm. many women, we want to hear things that make them smile you know, make us smile and make us feel good and so forth. And sometimes those other words that the other people may not use, it doesn't come across pleasantly, although it could be a compliment, but it, sometimes we, we put energy on certain words. Like some people, they want to say, take my word, my brand that's all over the world and on the internet and change it. And they want to, you know, say something like go to work is not a word, you know, and that looks like it's a, it's supposed to say and things of that nature. So I do get into a situation with words. Although but, but, but Nichelle, uh, such a highly, highly educated, and I say highly, you know what I'm saying? If you was at a bar, you'd be the liquor that's on the top shelf. You'd be like, yeah, you got to get up on the ladder to get that that liquor on the very top. That's you. You cream. Thank you. That's was, I love my brother. <laughs> you, 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 you. I just want to tell you something, family. You know, you're never gonna get your props from people who are not in the 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 top. That top. You know what I'm saying? And the the people that's on the same shelf as you. That's your props right there. You, you you can't expect people in the inner cities, the type of the circles that we run in. The, um, when you when you expect them to say shit that they're probably never even capable of saying, that they probably never even would think of saying to anyone, let alone you know us or anybody else. We expect a lot from people who aren't capable of giving us the shit we expect from them. You know, so um, that's why I always compliment you. I always give you your flowers. I always give you your, your due, you know, my media sensei. Sometimes I don't know where I get these words from, but that's that's me giving you what you wish the motherfuckers would say. That's me saying that shit because I appreciate what you've done. You feel me? Yeah. Every everybody ain't like man. I can't tell you how many people when I was in another world, how many people I've done shit for, and they was like, "Well, I didn't ask you to do that shit." Like what? 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 So it's people going to appreciate what you do, and it's people that's not, and unfortunately, that's just where we are. So the ones who show you they don't appreciate you, don't pay them no mind. You know, it's going to be one or two. Or three people that's going to give you props in the shell. Trust that. It's going, you know, that's why I want to be one of the ones. And I don't want you to be feeling, I don't want you to get down on yourself because people don't respect the, you know, you wear a lot of hats. You, mm -hmm. you, you, you wear a lot of different hats. You, a lot of people are really envious, jealous of you. They, they can't compete with you. They're, they're not on your level. All, all those words that say the same shit, they're not on your level all the way down to hating on you. That's all the same shit. That's, be, that's, that's, your, that's your flowers right there letting you know how fucking awesome you are because you got all these people tripping on you when they shouldn't even be fucking tripping on you. But that's them admiring you. Wow. And so that's the other part where we need to get past. You there know? you go. We need to start speaking on that on the show. Well, we, then we be down there two hours. But yeah, that's mm -hmm. what we need. See, when we start peeling down the layers of this onion, mm -hmm. 
that's gonna make people tune in. I, I believe that's because we're talking about real shit now. We're talking yeah. about feelings and stuff mm-hmm. we've gone through. Why people don't respect what I've done? Why people don't respect that I'm giving back? How come people don't want to do this? Why? See, when we start asking those questions, we're going to get answers. We we will get answers. Trust that, family. That's true. And this is going to be that last part because I looked up the book. Um, the book that I wrote is called. <laughs> That's hilarious. And it's really my book. The first one I actually wrote by myself. Wow. Yeah, so shout out to my cousin. I want to give my, uh, my cousin, uh, Sharice. She's the one that actually wanted to become an author. And then I heard on a radio station about this uh, platform called Create Space that became Kindle Direct Publishing. So the kdp.amazon.com that I put here in the show right there. Um, mm-hmm. She's the one that really wants to become an author. So we wrote two books together in two different states. And I, I met her. Didn't I meet her? No. No. I remember you talked about her before. You must have talked about her before. I remember. Oh, yeah. I talked about on her. On the Go to Work show. Yeah. Just, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh-huh. So the book, so now the book that I first wrote by myself is called Journey to Start on Smart, Broke, and Want to Be a Star. So mm, when you were okay. talking about how you want to know what people were like before. They got any notoriety before they made the money, that oh. type of thing. I'm one of those people, rare people. I feel like when I write this book, this is going to come to pass where people are going to be like, wow, she actually documenting, yeah. documented information prior to her becoming successful. And then yeah. the the, uh, the re- reason why I looked up that book, because it's even in the book that I talked about how my mom slapped me when I was in the hospital because my not wanting to be vulnerable, not wanting to be uh, dependent or uh, operate in codependency because I wanted to stay so independent that I didn't want to tell her that I was going to have surgery for a benign tumor and that, you know, to have it removed. And she, she was like, how do you even get to be that independent or something like that to the point where you don't want uh, help or you don't want to tell, you know, that you need, you know, some support or something. You're just going to walk in here and have this surgery. And then, you know, if anything goes wrong and so forth, which I wind up, I did need a blood transfusion. This before both my children and all of that. And it was like, uh, I'm from Compton. I don't know if that's, I know that's part of the reason because it ha- I have went through, you know, or it, it, you know, a lot. I've seen a lot. You know what I mean? And it's like it does do something to your your being. But it's like crazy that that's what happened. And I'm literally in the hospital bed. The doctors came over there looking like, man, right. like this your child? Do you know she just had surgery? Do you know she about to go through chemotherapy? Do you know that she just blah blah blah? And my mom was like, but she didn't tell me. You are a uh, you. Your legacy, you know, um, you, you, you know, you, you, you are Maya Angelou. You know that. Oh, yeah. You, you, you are Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou didn't know who she was. She was busy being her. You feel mm-hmm. me? But when you tell her story, you know, you are Cicely Tyson. Mm. You know, there. The, the, I, I, you know, you um, your, uh, 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 Sigourney, Sigourney Joiner. You know, I think that's her name, Sigourney Jordan. Is that right? Yeah. You know that that's you. You you busy. You know somebody else gonna tell our story, Michelle. I just somebody else gonna tell our story. Okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We see. They see Mm -hmm. us. Somebody Mm -hmm. gonna tell our shit. We busy doing it. You busy. You busy going to work. I mean. Mm You, you, you're busy going to work, family. So. Absolutely. So this is what it is, what it is. So I wanted to say that uh, in the instance of this is your first show as the journalist, Anthony right Rush. Now. And although not that you were about to count me out, no way, no, no way. But I am a new artist, music artist. So like mm-hmm. you said, you want to ask other people and so forth. But based on the fact that I know that this is your first show, I was listening to you and I wrote down those three points that I can make a connection to 
as a new artist, music artist. And at the same time, I did give a compliment. I want to compliment Ur7 once again. He's the one that noticed that I never said that I was a music artist or I never, uh, I wasn't into music out of all of the other things that I was doing. And then he took it upon himself and wrote the song, Go to Work. Yeah, and you, that's you, be why. you become a music artist, family. You was a rapper. <laughs> you feel me? Yes, you right. was a you was a rapper. Because so I was you, freestyling, and people yeah. and that's where that a lot of people that make a lot of money and do a lot of different things, they don't want to freestyle or they don't freestyle. Mm. And I was like, really? giving away. And it was yeah. that was something new I learned. <laughs> yeah. So you you was a rapper. Now you are a music artist because your it's your creativity. Your mm -hmm. your go to work your go to work perspective that's mm -hmm. that's the artistry right there rapper is uh mary had a little lamb fleece is white as snow you know everywhere she went this motherfucker was sure to go type of shit that's rapping but us we creative with the shit even though like like i i i said that because chuck d had said that but when chuck d did it he did it with artistry he went way back you know just like when the show started damn two hours ago but okay. Chuck D spoke on that. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. You are officially a rap mm -hmm. artist. You can look in the mirror and be like, I'm a rap artist. I ain't no rapper. I'm mm -hmm. a rap artist now. And and that's that's a confidence. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That that you need to walk in. Once you start walking in that confidence, then you mature, then you become an entertainer. You are well, you're already an entertainer. You know, you're an entertainer becoming a music artist. <laughs> because you already <laughs> uh, that's all right there. You know, yeah. Yeah, the trip. Urge had told me that one day, and that's the trip. I had to tell you this real quick. Do you know I was all, so offbeat? This dude took a, a drumstick. He was taking a drumstick and he would tap the side of my shoe. Whatever shoe I was coming to the studio in, he was uh -huh. tapping my shoe to get me on beat. Somebody yeah. else had bought me a metrodome. And it's, it's a trip. That's why people were saying, I don't even know how you've been freestyling when you not on beat at all when you come into the booth. <laughs> because you have the lyrics. You have the lyrics. All you have to do is just get your timing. That's all it is. And then that once you fun. say it according to the, to, to the <laughs> CPT, Queen G, CPT's timing, then that's when your artist, that's the artistry right there. You feel me? Because yeah. you can write you can write the rhyme down, but mm -hmm. when you bring it to life, that's the artistry. But anyway. Right. So I've been working on that. I've been doing that. Absolutely. And so with that in mind, also the serious ABCs. After I got that song together, go to work. Mm -hmm. I asked Urge. I said, Urge, can you let me go ahead and uh, do this song? <laughs> it's called, or this track. It's called Serious ABCs. Okay. And he was like, oh, okay, so now you're getting into the writing part. Absolutely. <laughs> I was yeah. like, yeah. And yeah. so it's been fun. I see that uh, some uh, bars app I have on my phone that mm -hmm. it, it was an honor that you thought that was a real uh, situation, one to one. But um, that is pretty neat that Jada Kiss was on there doing a, he was Bye. featuring. And that's where that came from. I was like, oh my goodness, this is my first cipher. <laughs> and it was so funny. But it worked out. That was so cool. So I want to say shout out to JD Kiss because then after that, literally for real, for real, then mm. he, he has inboxed me. Absolutely. So wow. like like you could tell he's a real person, you yeah. know. And then so I like that. I like too. And they know when people are new and this and that, and they need to the support or like to support. And like you said, yeah. to help them to gain the confidence mm -hmm. and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And yes, because I've always loved music, but at the same time, it, it is a discipline. It is a science to it and so forth. So I appreciate everybody that's been helping so me, good, assisting me, absolutely educating me. See, there you go. Absolutely. Go to work. So in the next show, we'll do a clip of your songs. Right, okay. and then we're gonna do a um, Heavenly Father of G Bizzo. We're gonna yeah. feature Rare Breed, and we're gonna um, lay my uh, song praises up from his Lay My Burdens Down CD, and mm -hmm. we're gonna to share information about the artist paint out what you okay. made that connection to how artists can work together out of love and camaraderie, and yeah. and then eventually make money together. 
That's what I'll be. Yeah, I want to push that right there. That's what I want to say right there. Yes. Yeah. yeah okay. Absolutely. Go to work. So, how would you like to wrap up your first show as the journalist? Anthony Rush. Well, I just want to say it's a pleasure. You know, it's a very informative show. And uh, we talked about a lot. We touched on a lot of bases. You know, the main thing is to try to, to change the direction of the music industry into a more positive where everybody can, you know, um, share their creativity, mm -hmm. and, you know, from a positive perspective and benefit from a positive perspective. It's not a competition. That's right. that's what I want them to understand. It's not a competition. We want mm -hmm. your con we want your contribution, but this is not a competition. And that's you know what? That was the other thing I did want to piggyback on because we were talking about the sports. Yeah. And what if, what would you say? Because you played sports before too, mm -hmm. without the sense of or the uh, aura of competition, what would sports be? Especially with the fact that you are doing a radio show oh, in the city of Inglewood, not far from the SoFi Stadium, and the Super Bowl is about to take place. Where would the music be if without the competition? Is that, is that the question? No, well, competition, because people are into competition because they are into sports and they also play music. They also yeah. are music artists. Oh, so... Okay. Yeah. Um, wow, that's a that's a um that's that's a tough one. Okay, let me give let me give you a little background while you process some information too. Just like okay. I just made a connection to Jada Kids. Okay. And Jada Kids, you if you look at his show, he does weight training. What he deals with fitness. Fitness is a sport as well. And it, just as well, obviously, you know, he's a music artist. Okay. There is a form of some competition. In a matter, even if it's just in, in competition with yourself, that word is still going to be prevalent or present, even when you're competing. Like, how many push-ups can you do? It's an all in fun. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a. You, do? you know what? I, I, I have a phrase. I have a phrase from one of my family members that fits this. I'm gonna use his acronym. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna use DOPE's acronym. Okay. The definition of pure excellence. Go. It's not a competition. I learned that from DOPE. It's not a competition, even if you're in competition with yourself, it's about the definition of pure excellence. So, mm, go um, King you know, so it's never enough. You've never done enough. As soon as you think you you've arrived you're still on your way as soon as you think you're around you you you've made it you, you you're still climbing you know it's and about now that's where that word more can come in yeah you can always yeah. do more real talk so that's what it is um it's not a competition it's a contribution and like I, like my boy King Dope say, the definition of pure excellence. Pure excellence. I think, I think that's what that means. It's not a contribution. It's not a competition. Mm -hmm. It's a contribution. The meaning of that is what mm -hmm. Dope's acronym is. Absolutely. The definition of pure excellence. So there wow, we go with deep. the words. See the power of the <laughs> words. That is deep. That's true. See, wow. go to work. You did that. <laughs> Absolutely. So the power of the word. So if we can saturate in media using contribution versus competition. Absolutely. And that wow. goes with my motto. I are not my motto that I created, but that entity where we say, teach people how to fish. Don't just give them the fish. Oh. So that's why I don't piggyback on people that I help or assisted, or shall we say educated <laughs> so much, you know, because I want, I have taught them how to stand on their own That's and right. I feel more empowered when I see that they can do it on their own. If I see that it looks like, oh, like I'd have to keep running down there to your show and help you or assist you. I didn't do my job or my just do. 
Yeah, when I was there, when you mm -hmm. were on my show. That's all. And like I say, hey, it's a pleasure to learn from one of the best that ever I've ever seen to do it. So, you know, shout out to your family. Real talk. Go to work. Shout out to you. You do, you standing tall. You doing that. Go to work. Absolutely. Right, so you How keep up the great work. And we, you need to tune in on Mondays at 7 p.m. on Accelerated Radio, the show. That's right. Real talk, real talk. Holla back at y'all, family. Peace. Absolutely. We West shall be West. back when? Uh, next next Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, at next Thursday, time? 7 p.m. live. Tune in to City City Teamwork. City City Media. Teamwork, your boy. The journalists, a.k.a. Double G. And dollar sign. Go to work. Real All talk, right. Real talk. Go to work. Until All next right. time. Thank okay. you so much, everyone. Go to work. Take care. Take care.